All right, so I think that should now be recording. Um, for people watching the recording, hello, this is our community meeting, uh, July 11th, 2024. Uh, I'm going ahead and recording this bit of the meeting just because I'm gonna do a walkthrough of how to use VS Code uh, in the web browser to make a contribution to the Pybase. Um, the first time you make a contribution to the Pybase, uh, you'll have to do it on a fork that you control. And so you can go ahead and uh, if you're logged into GitHub, you can go ahead and fork it. And I see there's lots of different folks that have forked the, the repository. You would click this button. I've already created one. So I'll go ahead and pull that up. And uh, you could do your work here. I'm going to synchronize it because I'm a little behind here. And that's just for basically your first contribution. We ask you to do it on a fork. Um, once you've made a contribution and it's been merged, we'll usually give you permissions to, to edit the repository directly. Um, but either way, the whether you're working on the fork or once you've gotten access to the uh, actual repository itself, uh, the easiest way to make a new contribution is through something called github.dev. And it's just as simple as changing the .com to .dev in the URL, or hit enter, or you can just even just if you're not editing a text field, hit the period key on your keyboard, and it'll send you there automatically. So I'm going to do this on my branch uh, of the Pybase, and I believe it should, it's all pretty much the same except for one extra step. Um, so it boots up a web editor. Uh, if you're familiar with the VS Code text editor, it's basically that running in your web browser, but it's wired up directly with the repository uh, that you're editing. And so this is, allows you to actually make some changes uh, to a bunch of files at once. Um, so just as an example, I could perhaps create a new space. It's probably one of the more complicated sorts of contributions. So I'll make a space 199 by copying and pasting this, uh, just control C, control V like you do anywhere else, or you could right click and copy the directory. But now I wanna make this space 199, so I'll rename it to 199. And it's thinking about it. All right, the gears of the internet have finished. And then I'll just need to go through and, and here we're showing off some one of the newer features, this uh, plugin that's gonna actually take all these different IDs like this tells us that space 198 is the disjoint union of the reels on a singleton, but I actually want, this is gonna be a new space, 199, and its name is gonna be a made up space. And then it's gonna be the disjoint union of, I don't know, the Cantor space and, well, maybe not the empty space, that's boring. The one point compactification, all right, I'm just making this up, right? But the, you get the idea here. This has an updated right here, uh, even though it points to itself. I think if I refresh, uh, that might trigger the, the edit to update here on that branch. So maybe now it'll point to the, the made up space itself. There we go. So now that, that kind of, that's the rule of thumb. If, if things get out of sync, just hit refresh in your browser. And that usually does the trick. Um, I'm going to just give it one property now. At this, um, at this point, I can mention that uh, for the change you just made right now, there is the handy feature of the preview in the editor window on the yeah, upper right. You. Right, so this will help, especially with the math notation, give you a preview of what the uh, the content will look like. It doesn't parse the references. That might be something we do in the future is go ahead and do the full, like it would appear on Pybase. Uh, but for now, it just gives you the IDs. You'll use these hints over here in the plugin uh, to make sure that you're pointing to the right thing. Here with the disjoint union of the Cantor set and then the one point compactification, the RN's fort space, maybe I'll call that a prime or something. Uh, maybe that'd be a little bit more appropriate. Okay, and then I'm going to give it one property here. Um, so this is going to be, I'll just say it's compact. Is it actually compact? Sure, it's a union of two compacts, isn't it? So that's even correct. Uh, follows as the union of the of two compact spaces. 
uh, let's let's refer to the property, not type out compact, of two compact spaces. Okay, oh, but it should be true then. All right, I'm purposely making a mistake here just to demo demonstrate what's gonna happen. Uh, we have some guardrails here. The mistake I'm making is I'm not updating the space ID. Uh, it still thinks it's the old space. So let's just go ahead and see what's gonna happen if I do that. First of all, I'm gonna go over here to source control. I've now made edits, added a new space and a new property. I might've tweaked the theorem or edited a property as well. Those are pretty straightforward. Those are just standalone files in the theorems folder and the properties folder and are edited very similarly. Uh, also something I didn't do, but you could is add a reference. Um, usually, uh, yeah, uh, to make sure I don't screw up the syntax, let me just go ahead and copy over a reference from another file. There we go. For this case, it's the union of two compact spaces. We wouldn't actually require a reference here, but maybe there's a handy Wikipedia reference. Maybe I could call it the, the made up space. Made up space on Wikipedia. All right. So um, going ahead and committing that change. Uh, first of all, I'm doing this on the main branch. Uh, I bet you never want to edit the main branch. Uh, on your personal repository, you would have permissions to. On the PyBase repository, it would yell at you and say, no, you can't do that. Uh, regardless, never edit main. Make a new uh, branch. I'm going to call this the made up space example. If you feel like being really, I usually throw in the date as well, just so that I can reuse branch names if I have to do something similar later. Um, doesn't really matter. Go ahead and switch to that branch. And now that I'm on a branch with my changes, I can go ahead and make a commit uh, to that branch. And that's going to be a private copy of a proposed change to the Pi base. All right. And so once all the bits move through the internet, I can go over here and I can say that I added a new space S119 that's completely made up. You know, just describe whatever it is that you're trying to contribute to the Pi base. Commit and push to this not main branch here. And now I see not, it's not yelling at me about source control. I don't see a little asterisk right here. I must have pushed it. And in fact, if I just change .dev back to .com, I can go back to, and again, this is on my forked version of the repository. Uh, yeah, I'm one commit ahead of the main branch of the core data repository, and GitHub's being kind and saying, hey, you can compare and pull request here. And so now that I've made, I've edited however many files, and you can add more commits to this if you, you don't have to do this all in one step. If you're working on it, a draft, you can make it a draft pull request right here. Actually, uh, before doing the pull request, uh, you can check that the commits succeeded or not. Y you could if uh, if you were actually if, if you go the core. actions. Oh yeah, you're right. You're not yeah. on the because I'm because I'm on my personal. I'm, oh yeah, yeah. I'm okay, take a posterity. Gotcha. Yeah, right. but the first time when you're on your own fork, I won't do that. So I'll make a draft pull request. Um, and you'll see it says it's verified. That just means I did it through the web browser. Um, but it it doesn't do the automatic processing of, hey, does this look like a uh, it's going to actually work? In fact, it won't because I didn't update one of the IDs. So let's go ahead and, and show what would happen. Now, this is me being actually me as the administrator of Pybase. I can go through, in fact, anyone with right access to the Pybase when you're reviewing, if somebody makes a pull request from their own fork where it doesn't automatically process and check for validity, you can actually do the same .dev trick here, hit period or change.com to .dev on the pull request. And what I typically do is I just, this is the quickest way I know of to do this currently is to go ahead and if you have right access to the Pi base, which anyone who's made a contribution, we're happy to give you right access for future contributions if we haven't already. But this, this complicated branch here from the pull request, I'm just gonna create a new branch and what is the pull request? It's pull request 688. So I just call it PR 688. That's my typical. And all you have to do is click create a new branch. I don't have to switch to it because now if I go back, now that I've created a branch on the actual PyBase da data repository as a reviewer, because I have write access to it, you can see that it's actually doing the compile build stuff 
here. And it's going to probably yell at me in a moment because, um, yep, it failed as expected. So the path does not match. I didn't update that uh, space ID. So this is some, another thing I recommend doing, um, whether you're reviewing or writing, is if it's a quick change like that, you don't have to pull up github.dev. In fact, oh, here it's yelling at us directly at the issue, right? This should have been space 199, not 198. So I'll just actually go here and suggest the change. The author can do this. The reviewer can do this either way and add that comment that, hey, this 198 should have been a 199. And then we can just go ahead and commit it right there. And that's going to uh, make the edit. Now, again, because this is still on a fork, my personal fork, it doesn't automatically do the build. Okay, so I've got to go through, and uh, this is why we'll let we'll give you right access so that you don't have to do this extra step every time a new commit is made. But I'm going to go back through and make a second branch, PR688. I guess I'll just do that. Um, the easiest thing to do is just to make a, another branch. PR six eighty eight two, and then once you just make that new branch with that same commit on it, it'll run the processing. And uh, I'm going to say it's ready for review. I'm going to say that this is, even though we won't actually merge this, of course, because it's a made up space. But I believe it should be a not broken contribution, even though it's not a space we want to add. Yep, all the checks have passed. The last thing that I'll do, uh, again, it would be the actual branch name if you were writing on the actual repos Pybase repository directly. But uh, because I was operating like this, the first contribution made on a fork of the repository, uh, whoever made the copy that ran the process, um, I'll just have to, this is a manual thing at the moment. We should automate this someday. Commit is available as branch, what I call it, PR688-2. And once we've got that nice green check mark, uh, oh, it's not there, but I think it'll be there if I refresh. Yeah, it's there, it's there. Now I've got that check mark that everything built correctly, I can go to the Pi base. Go to advanced. You can see I was reviewing another pull request the other uh, a moment ago. And then down here at the bottom of the spaces, I should have my made up space. I made up space. Union of the canner space and one point compactification. And then if I was actually going to um, merge this, well, I can't do this myself. I can because I'm an administrator. I could override this, but uh, only administrators can do that. Everyone else needs to have at least one review from another community member who would go over here, look at the files changed, peek over here at the website and see, okay, here's the one um, union of two compact spaces, the made up space is compact. That all seems legitimate. And so again, uh, I can't actually approve my own uh, repository. It has to be a different contributor uh, to, that submits the approval of that pull request. Uh, but with one approval, then you can squash and merge. Uh, of course, this is just a toy example. I'm going to close the pull request and not actually merge this. Um, so that's, I think, it for the recording, unless, uh, Patrick, or anyone has a, anything else I should add for posterity for this recording? Uh, can you go back to the editor for a second? Absolutely. So always go back to the editor, change.com to .dev. So uh, uh, just to mention the, the features that I find useful uh, on the leftmost column are uh, the, the Explorer, which gives all the files. And then the next one is useful too. It's the search uh nice. that you can use for searching for anything really so if you're looking for a reference to uh general topology by willard that's a really nice way to kind of quickly grab the zb math reference right there or if you're looking for a certain property that's a very important feature i should have pointed out thanks patrick um 
and then uh, also in the in the third or fourth icon here for the source control if you make a change uh, maybe you can make a bogus change somewhere and uh, then it shows up so if you click on on uh, if you click on that uh, on the file name then you get a diff of the change which is also handy absolutely um, and uh, on the same line on the left if you click on the little icon for the for the the file itself uh, that gives you back to the to the editor pane for that particular file. And if you realize that you've made a bogus change like I just did. Oh yeah, yeah. you can file. do undo. There's the undo one. discard page. Discard. Yeah. yeah, very good. So I don't think I'm gonna make that contribution there. <laughs> Thanks Patrick, those are both all really good, helpful features there. Uh, anything else we should mention while we're in the recorded part of today's meeting for this video, for folks getting started? And, uh, and then, Two icons down on the leftmost column. Uh, there is the extensions tab, which uh, at the bottom. Oh, where is PyBase? Okay, there you go, PyBase. Sometimes I, I disable it when the line is too long and I can't see what's going on. I, I disable the PyBase extension and then I re enable it afterwards. Because sometimes if you get a lot of uh, expansion of of space space IDs or property IDs on the same line, it's kind of difficult to see. Yep. I don't know. What do you do about that? I, I haven't I haven't seen that yet. I haven't I have I haven't found that reason to do that yet. But it's regardless, it's a good thing to know it's there. This is doing a lot of the magic of the preview stuff. And if for whatever reason it's getting in your way, feel free to disable it and re-enable it later. Uh, but it should be on GitHub.dev. We've wired it up to automatically enable uh when you spin up github.dev so you sh it, it should just work but if it ever gets in your way feel free to disable and re-enable later i think that's all i have awesome all right well thanks for watching the recording and hopefully this helped you uh uh get started making a contribution to the pi base and the other thing i'll just say is please join us we have community calls um it depends, you know, the summer we've met about once a month uh, during the semester, you know, we might meet every two or three weeks. Uh, just keep an eye on uh, the place to look for is back at github.com slash pybase slash data uh, slash whatever. Go to the discussions. And then you can see our community call schedule here in the discussion board there. So uh, thanks for joining the recording and uh, hope to see you at a, a community meeting in the future.